photos provide a window into the past. They show us a completely different time, capturing that moment in an image that will never change. Researchers have learned so much about our ancestors through the pictures that we collect, but sometimes we come across photos that are strange and unnerving. They make us question everything we thought we knew, or are simply too chilling to understand. These are 20 weird old photos that you have to see to get a glimpse into what life used to be like. <laughs> 137-year-old man John Smith is a pretty famous guy. Although the chief was once a British colonizer, he eventually found Jamestown and saved Pocahontas from being executed. He's actually the love interest of the titular Disney movie and lived an interesting life. He had eight wives once survived getting hit by a train, and adopted Tom Smith, his only son. But what's most fascinating about John Smith is his age. There are multiple photos of Smith as an older man, where he's grayed and wrinkled. But rumor has it that John actually lived to be 137 years old, and these pictures are evidence of that. It's hard to say if this is true. John eventually died of pneumonia, and there are some suggestions that the diseases the chief fought through were what truly made him appear in this way. There's no real way of actually knowing, and it's probably not at all possible for anyone to live that long during that time period. But still, we have these pictures to ponder. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Take a look at this picture. It's unbelievable, isn't it? When the photo was first found, no one quite knew what was going on here. This was taken in the United States in a small southern town. The folk there worked in the woods, chopping down trees to use as fuel. They clearly had some mighty tall assistants. Is this a real giant? It's plausible that this is simply a statue advertising local business. However, it's also possible that this image was created with a trick of the camera, with a changing perspective forcing us to see one man far larger than the rest. What do you think happened here? Let us know by using hashtag missing topic and comment below. Eva Carrier The science of seances and communication with the next life has been of huge fascination to us over the years. Humankind has always been interested in what might happen after death, and we have continuously tried to contact the other side for some hint of what's to come. There have been many fraudulent mediums who have claimed to have contacted the dead, but Eva Carrier is particularly infamous. There are a series of photographs that showcase her so-called skills in action. However, Eva was a fake known for manipulating the photos to make it seem as if she had special properties. She used cardboard and paper cutouts to create the illusion that a spirit had arrived. She even created ghostly ectoplasm from chewed paper in an attempt to make the whole thing believable. Although Eva might have earned quite a lot of fame and money in her time, these photos now act as a reminder of how absurd the whole thing was. Leporatic Some photos depict the unimaginable. They're powerful and show the worst sides of human history. Old photos are incredible for documenting key events in our timeline. The death of Leporatic is one such event that's been photographed and analyzed years on. The outspoken 17-year-old was a Bosnian member of Yugoslav partisans and a communist. She'd fought for her people in every way that she could but her beliefs put her in terrible danger. On the 8th of February, 1943, the young girl was hanged for her ideologies. She was murdered by the Nazis during World War II. The picture serves as a reminder of her bravery in the face of terrible circumstances. Her final words were fight, people, for your freedom. This photo is a symbol of strength and has immortalized her as a woman who never backed down. She would later become the youngest recipient of the Order of the People's Hero, because even when she was offered a way out of the noose, she chose not to give up her allies. Bobby Gibb Women have always been able to run in marathons, haven't they? Well, that's not strictly true. The Boston Marathon is a famous event that's held every year, allowing participants the chance at glory and victory. It's certainly a difficult race, but anyone should be able to compete in it. Well, that never used to be the case. It was previously an all-male event, because women were deemed to be incapable of running such distances. However, in 1966, a woman by the name of Bobby Gibb gate-crashed the race. She first allowed many of the male runners to depart before she jumped into the marathon. She tried to disguise herself, but when people quickly realized she was a woman, she revealed herself much to the crowd's delight. Bobby Gibb 
went on to be a famous participant in the race, even though she wasn't technically in it. She actually finished ahead of two-thirds of the other runners, though, demonstrating that she had every right to be there. The photos taken on that day are an important moment in history. Adolf Hitler and Lederhosen Adolf Hitler is one of the most photographed men in history. He's vital in the way human society developed across the 20th century. As the leader of the Nazi Germany, he was well-versed in visual propaganda and understood how to motivate his people. Hitler wanted to get back to traditional family values and sensed that the country would benefit from celebrating in culture and heritage. Thus, this picture was taken of Hitler in classic Lederhosen, designed to endear him to the populace. It's certainly a statement and does reflect a well-known piece of German tradition. However, Hitler actually went into a rage about the photos and having to wear the Lederhosen at all, because it showed his knobbly knees. The discovered picture doesn't really reflect what Hitler's propaganda team would have wanted. Instead, it's just a reminder of how cruel and apparently vain the terrible fascist was. Hearing sound for the first time There have been some truly amazing scientific breakthroughs in the audio community over the past few decades. We take things like hearing aids for granted now. However, in the 20th century, these kinds of technological breakthroughs were few and far between. Harold Whittles, a young boy, had spent the first five years of his life being unable to hear. However, this photo, which was taken by Jack Bradley and published in Reader's Digest, shows Harold's reaction to hearing for the first time. In 1974, he was given a hearing aid, which changed his life. His look is one of complete shock because his world had entirely changed. This is the sort of old photo you have to see as it shows how far we've really come. This is an astounding and beautiful moment that was luckily caught on camera and is a vital piece of evidence that shows just how quickly technology changed the way we live. The first Ronald McDonald McDonald's is a worldwide brand that seems to just always be around, but the franchise was first created in 1940 and it took some time before it became the juggernaut it is today. There's even a movie about it. The mascot, Ronald McDonald, would have surely always been a part of the branding, but in truth, Ronald was a much later addition. In fact, an old photo shows the very first person to play the titular clown in 1963. The actor Willard Scott is featured in the photo, which shows a very basic version of Ronald McDonald in action. Although the look of the clown has changed many times in the years since, the general concept has always remained the same. This doesn't really look like the Ronald we've all come to know. The cup on his nose is a dead giveaway that this is a prototype version of the mascot. It's funny to see how one of the world's most recognizable fast food characters has changed almost beyond recognition. Shares his ration Germany, during World War II, used some unspeakable methods to increase their control over invaded territories. One of their priorities was to plunder the food supply in Soviet areas, to sustain the troops and essentially starve out the population. It was a terrible time for the soldiers and locals who had to survive in such conditions. However, this picture from a photographer of the 291st Division of the Wehrmacht George Gunlock shows that even in hell, there's kindness. This depicts a German soldier who's actually sharing their rations with a Soviet mother in 1941. Although the act would ultimately prove to be futile, considering it simply wouldn't be enough, it shows that not everyone in the German army clearly believed in what they were fighting for. It's a sign of humanity in a desperate time. Although the Nazi soldier could have easily been punished for such an act of heroism, he did it anyway because it was the right thing to do. Giant Hippo Harnessed Our relationship with animals has changed over the last few decades. We've begun to understand our role in the balance of nature, and as more species come to the brink of extinction, we've stepped up our dedication to conservation. However, the early 20th century was well known for treating animals very differently with creatures like elephants and lions featured in circuses. This 1924 picture shows a hippo that's actually been harnessed by a trainer and attached to a circus cart. While it's certainly impressive as hippos are said to be of low intelligence, it's also absolutely unbelievable that anyone could come that close to one of the deadliest creatures on the planet. When hunting for prey, a hippo can move at incredible speeds and is well equipped in the strength department. However, it certainly shouldn't be pulling us around. Painters on the Brooklyn Bridge Health and safety regulations have certainly changed because no one could get away with this these days. The work of Eugene de Salignac is absolutely legendary. 
with the photographer capturing some truly iconic moments in history. The Atlantic published many of the photos from its archives, and among them were some shots that Eugene took of the Brooklyn Bridge. Taken on October 7, 1914, the picture shows a group of painters who were working on the cables on the bridge. They didn't have harnesses or protective gear. They simply climbed up and freely suspended themselves above the bridge and the river below. It's a remarkable image that shows the dedication of the workers who helped to maintain the incredible structure. This old photo is another tiny window into another time, where everything was different, from the clothing to the skyline in the background. The detail the photo managed to capture is as if the audience has managed to travel back. Smiling Child Krampus, Santa Claus, Saint Nick, Father Christmas. The icon of the festive season has gone by many names and was made all the more iconic by the Coca-Cola advert, which popularized his classic red look. However, while the traditional Christmas figure might be a worldwide symbol of hope and happiness, in some parts of the world that image has been morphed. The idea of Krampus, the horror character and anti-Christmas figure, comes from European folklore. The demonic character has been pictured a few times in history, often as part of a traditional ceremony. In the classic fables, Santa might deliver gifts to the good children, but Krampus follows on behind to dish out the punishment to those who have sinned. It's a frightening idea, and it's strange that so many people have continued to keep this sinister villain as part of their festive season. While Krampus has been depicted in imagery again and again, from postcards to meet and greets, he'll never get any less scary regardless of how many times you see him. Lionel the Lion-Faced Boy Sideshow freaks was an incredibly cruel way of describing people often with medical conditions. They were brought into circuses and fairs to entertain and amaze the crowd. Lionel the Lion-Faced Boy is one of the most famous characters among these tours. His real name was Stefan Bobrowski, and he was most commonly associated with Barnum and Bailey shows. Born in 1890 in Warsaw, Lionel had dreams of becoming a dentist, but his condition changed everything. This picture shows why he got his name. Lionel had hypertrichosis, which caused the intense hair growth. Although he was incredibly intelligent and spoke five different languages, people feared him just because of his appearance. Although he made a living out of his look, which was boosted by a backstory involving his father getting eaten by a lion, Stefan truly deserved better. It was a very different time, and while today Stefan would have gotten help and had an opportunity to follow his aspirations, back then he was given a label. The Headless Girl Carnivals and fairgrounds were always looking for other attractions that were cheap to produce but really effective with crowds. The Headless Girl first started appearing in sideshows in the 1930s and 40s, created by a German named Dr. Egon Heinemann. The character was given a tragic backstory, losing her head in some freak accident or horrific murder. The body of the girl was said to be brought back to life through a specialist machine that the doctor had created, despite its missing cranium. In actuality, the trick was a simple one, involving mirrors. The head was covered and the mirrors reflected the surroundings, making it look as if it was no longer attached to the body. Despite how easy it was to reproduce, audiences continued to fall for it, and the idea began popping up across the United States. The displays became more and more complex, with extra tubes and machinery added to try and sell the effect fully. Headquarters of Mussolini's Italian Fascist Party Propaganda is an incredibly powerful tool in a fascist arsenal, and Mussolini, the Italian dictator, was never against using it to control his population. A local headquarters, Palazzo Bracci in Rome, was decorated in 1934 in order to encourage the local electorate to vote for the regime's representatives list. The building is covered in the word yes, a powerful message of exactly what Mussolini's government wanted the people to do. It was an intimidating image, and one that would have sparked concern and fear among locals who really wanted to vote no in the important democratic process. But democracy was pretty much an illusion in this particular case, and regardless of the propaganda, the results were pretty much set in stone before anyone had even had a chance to cast their vote. While these days propaganda is oftentimes a little bit subtler, there's definitely no hiding this. Interestingly, 99.84% of voters ticked the yes box on this particular referendum, showing how powerful the messaging strategy was. Three men in a marathon The Olympics have seemingly been around forever. After all, the ancient Greeks invented it and it's still an event that's held in the modern era. 
However, the first truly modern iteration of the Olympics took place in Greece in 1896. The event was the start of a spectacle that would last generations. Although only 14 nations took part and most of the Olympians were Greek, that didn't stop people from turning out in their thousands to witness history being made. This photo shows the event that took place on day 11, a marathon for the ages. Although it featured limited competitors as demonstrated by the photo, the 26-mile race was actually watched by over 100,000 people. It was won by the Greek Spirit and Lewis, who successfully completed the race from Marathon to Athens. Although the Olympics would continue to get bigger and bigger with each passing iteration, this first modern variation is incredibly important in what it achieved. Miss Atomic Bomb The city of Las Vegas in Nevada became the atomic city in the early 1950s. From atomic cocktails to atomic singers, including Elvis Presley, the stunt was designed to normalize the tests that were happening nearby. Experts suggested that any radiation fallout from the detonation of bombs in the desert was simply inconvenient. Las Vegas took advantage of becoming the center of an intriguing story and was incredibly useful as a propaganda machine for the military who wanted to hide the nefariousness of their experiments. There were even beauty pageants based around the atomic weapon, with this image of Miss Atomic Bomb being taken in 1957. Although there was no competition to crown Lee A. Merlin as the pageant champ, the photo became known worldwide as a symbol of Las Vegas during that time period. Salem UFO Sighting Salem is an incredibly eerie place to visit. It's known for its history with witches and the horrendous trials that took place there. However, in 1952, something else caught the attention of locals and it was immortalized in a photo. A series of UFO sightings were reported in Washington across July of 1952. President Truman took interest in these reports at the time, and the press eventually led to two USAF major generals having to talk the public through why these sightings were happening. The Pentagon press conference led to the explanation that the UFOs were not UFOs at all, but rather a mirage created by a weather inversion. However, this photo taken by a lifeguard in Salem, Massachusetts in 1952 shows exactly what locals had been seeing with four strange lights hovering in the sky. The climate-based explanation that had been provided doesn't seem sturdy enough to counter this picture. While some might call it a hoax and others might talk of military testing in the area, there's really no way of knowing what was seen in Salem on that day. A Little Joy The photography around World War II and after it had come to an end is often full of grief and despair. As humanity attempted to put the world back together after such a devastating conflict, but every now and then there's a little bit of joy that reminds the Allies exactly what they were fighting for, peace. This photo was taken in 1946 by Gerald Waller and depicts a six-year-old Austrian boy named Werfel who lived in an orphanage. It would have been tough for him to get any new clothes throughout the conflict. However, after a visit from the American Red Cross, his luck began to look up. He was gifted with a new pair of shoes, which he immediately came to treasure. His happiness and relief to have something to wear on his feet is really heartwarming, and it shows that during this time period, it was the little things that mattered. The act of kindness is just a small example of how people began to heal. Carving Mount Rushmore Eye Mount Rushmore seems to have always been around, and yet work was taking place on the landmark in the 1920s and 30s. The incredibly impressive structure depicts four famous U.S. presidents, who were deemed to be integral in the formation of what the United States is today. While there is limited documentation on the construction of Mount Rushmore, there are some pictures showing just how challenging the work would have been. This particular photo, which was taken in 1936, shows a carver putting further detail into Thomas Jefferson's eye. He hangs on to the eyelid without any harness or protective equipment, knowing that there is a huge drop behind him. This symbol of patriotism is known across the world, but not enough thought has been put into the hard work of those who risk their lives putting everything together. Although there's a long history attached to the carvings getting approved in the first place, there should be a renewed focus on the people that ultimately made it happen on the ground. Taking a mirror selfie The word selfie was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2013 to describe someone taking a picture of themselves. While selfies seem like a modern invention helped along by the use of smartphones, there are historical pictures showcasing people taking selfies much earlier than the 2010s. In fact, this fun photo shows a couple in Japan, 
around 1920, taking a mirror selfie with the use of a large camera. These partners seem pretty happy to have made a little bit of history, and it's amazing that more selfies haven't shown up throughout our timeline. These photos are all perfect for getting back in touch with our fascinating history and are vital in understanding who we are at our core. From conflict to moments of joy and amazing discoveries, we continue to learn and make mistakes every day. These photos immortalize those moments for future generations. 